that's really good. Thank you for um, thank you for joining us today. Um, my name's Peter Thurn. So, and today is all about uh, this new tool we've got called the Within Herd Ranking Tool. So, um, I might share my screen and make a bit of a start, and because I've just got a small presentation that we'll go through. Well, there's someone else has just joined us. Okay. Can we all see that first screen? Can't yep. tell me. Yeah, good oh, good. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. Oh, good. Yep. <laughs> I needed someone to come off mute. Oh. <laughs> all right. So. Come on, PowerPoint, kick into gear. So what is what is the issue in this space? Why have we why have we developed this tool? Um, so if we go back a step, breeding values are expressed on what we refer to as a breed base. So what does that mean? It, it means that the breed of the sire determines which base the animal's breeding value is expressed. And um, so the reality is you can't directly compare a, a Holstein and a Jersey based on their breeding values. So if we think about genomics and genomic selection and the way we use genomics in our herds for culling and management decisions, if you're genomically testing in a crossbred herd or a mixed breed herd, it's really difficult to use those results objectively because you can't compare the animals that are sired by bulls of different breeds. You can compare those animals within their breed group, but you can't compare them across the herd. So it's a, it's a real issue that's con confronting us at DataGene in terms of getting people or getting people to adopt genomics in particular that have crossbred and mixed bred herds because the results for those people aren't quite as meaningful as they are for people that have straight bred herds. So we've developed this within herd ranking tool to try and overcome that and to enable farmers to use genomic information to be able to make better um, culling and breeding decisions within their herd if they've got a mixed or a crossbred herd. So another way of kind of thinking about this is, and this is this is some of the the, the probably this for one of a better description, some of the silliness of, of our current situation. We have two animals. We have one that's a Holstein out of a Jersey cow, so Holstein Jersey cross. So she's 50% Holstein, she's 50% Jersey. Because she's sired by Holstein bull, she gets expressed, her breeding values are on the Holstein base. In the same herd, you might have a cow that is sired by Jersey bull out of a Holstein cow. So same breed, same breed mix, 50% Holstein, 50% Jersey. But because she's sired by a Jersey, she gets her ABV is expressed on the Jersey base. And you can't compare the two cows, even though they have the same relative amounts of Holstein and Jersey blood in them. So now, so you can't compare them. So we have to overcome this so that we can make our products, in particular genomics, more applicable to more people. So a little bit of technical stuff. As I said before, all breeds are analysed, or sorry, all breeds are analysed together. So when we get all the data in from different herds around the country, all the production data and type and workability and all that stuff, well, not so much the type, but everything else, it all gets analysed together. So if you've got a herd of cows that are Holstein and Jersey, we analyse them together. So we, when we do our first kind of cut of ABVs, everything's in the big melting pot. 
There's no difference. We don't see skin colour at, at that point. Okay. Where from, from then though, we start to split the breeds out so that they're in their own, their own breed groups. So the Holsteins are compared to Holsteins, Jerseys to Jerseys. And we identify a group of cows as a comparison group, and that's what we call the base. So the group of cows that, that form the comparison group are purebred cows, in this instance, born between 2014 and 2018. So that's our, that's our comparison point. And we set their breeding values to zero by subtracting the average of the breeding values from, or the average breeding value of that group from their breeding values. And so in effect, if you're a purebred cow, the average purebred cow born between 2014 and 2018 in the Holstein breed will have a breeding value of zero and the same in the Jersey breed. So that's how we create this base, but it's all within breed. So moving forward, how do we make this within herd ranking? The first thing we have to do is take the ABVs for a particular herd and undo the base. So that base that we've just implemented so that we can express breeding values, we take that and we remove it. And that means that all of the cows and heifers and calves within your herd are all on a, an equal footing. So again, we've removed, we've removed color out of, the, out of the picture. We've just said, right, you're all a big mob of black cows and you can all be compared equally on the basis of you just being a cow and not being a Holstein or a Jersey. Then what we do is we calculate the different indices. So the ASI, the BPI, HWI and survival. Oh, and SI, of course. Now, the one trait that causes us a little bit of a headache is feed saves. So feed saves a bit of a unique trait and partly because Holsteins have a genetic, a genomic component to it and the other breeds don't. And we have to make sure that we get the relativities of live weight between breeds correct. Okay, so it's really important that we, we get that breed component or that breed difference correct so that we can express live weight, you know, the live weight of a Holstein and the live weight of a Jersey on the, on the same scale. So when, when the team were developing this tool, that was probably one of the trickier things that they had to do was just make sure that we got, you know, when we're talking about kilos of live weight in a Jersey, it was a kilos of live weight in the Holstein and kilos of live weight in the red and we're talking the same language. Now the within herd bit. What we've done and what I want you to do, and especially the farm on the call is think about your production index or your PI. Okay, so your PI is the way of measure, measuring the relative performance of animals within your herd for production, okay? And like the within herd ranking tool, it ignores breed. So, you know, you've got a PI, if you, you've got a PI of 100 for production, that's your average cow. And she could be black and white, she could be Jersey, she could be red, but she's got a PI of 100. Cows with really good PIs are around 130 and cows with bad PIs are down in the 80s and this sort of thing. So we've taken that same concept, that same PI concept, and we've applied it to these within herd rankings. And so the average cow for a particular trait in your herd, let's say it's BPI, will be 100. And a really good cow in your herd will be 120 plus. A, a, a good cow will be 110. Your average cows are gonna be between 90 and 100. And if you're below 90, you're starting to get into the, the below average part of your, of your herd. Okay, so just like a, just like, like a PI, um, it uses that same, that same sort of logic. 
And it's all split up within, you know, from a technical point of view, it's all in standard deviations. The key thing is it's within your herd. And so a within herd ranking of 110 in your herd doesn't equal 110 in somebody else's herd. And again, if we think about how PIs work, it's the same thing. A PI, a cow with a PI of 130 in your herd may not be 130 in your neighbour's herd. She might only be 115. Okay, so the key about the key thing about this tool, it's designed for you to make management decisions within your herd. It's not a it's not a herd and not a tool that you can use to compare your breeding, compare your cows across herds. That's what ABVs are for. This is really a way for you to be able to take your information and make some meaningful decisions around it, especially in the areas of, of culling and also mating and breeding and, um, and those sorts of things. So I'm going to just pause there. I don't think I've got another slide. Um, so I'm just going to pause there and just ask if there's any questions before I launch in and show you how we how we get to the how we how we can use the within herd ranking tool. Come on, guys! I didn't think I did a very good job of that, so there must be some questions. <laughs> Now, Pete Jarrett here. I um, yeah, I think uh, better understand, you know, where that sort of all fits together now. Um, you know, from my point of view, and understanding that better understanding around the fact that it's basically expressed in that uh, standard deviation format. You know, so um, yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I, I go, Rob. Please. Yeah. Uh, driving, so it's a bit hard, but uh, what about the accuracy or reliability? That's what the farmer's going to ask. So the reliability is, and we'll see that in the report that I'll show you in a minute, it's he said the reliability is exactly the same as what it is for the breeding value. So it's um, so you don't lose any reliability by using the, the within herd ranking tool. Yeah, but good question. I, to me, I think the key thing is, you know, most farmers are familiar with PIs, and if you think about this tool in that same, in that same way, it'll, you know, the understanding of it will come to you quite quickly. And I think the other part of that too, Pete, is that uh, um, we wanted to avoid calculating the exact same traits in the exact same format. So in other words, we didn't want the situation where a cow had two BPIs and, you know, you were trying to work out, well, is this BPI to the breed or is this BPI to the crossbred? And you then multiply that by the number of traits we've got and you could see it would become very confused if we had a separate calculation for every trait that we kill. So what you'll explain now will actually, you know, show people that uh, we're avoiding that, well, which BPI is it? Yeah, no, that's exactly right, Pete. And also, you know, we didn't want people really trying to sit there and unravel the differences between Holsteins and Jerseys and, and Reds and, and Crossbreds because, let's face it, the people that have decided to, to choose those breeds have chosen them for a range of reasons. and. It's not our place to be dictating breed choice to farmers. What we want to do is be able to help farmers to make better decisions within their herd. So it was really important for us, I think, to avoid having creating a, a tool that would allow people to make those sort of ca comparisons at a breed level. You can make those comparisons within your herd and make and make decisions, but we didn't want people trying to use this sort of information to you know promote one breed ahead of another because people have made conscious decisions to have the breed mix that they've that they've got and what we want to do is help them make better decisions within their herd all right if there's no more questions i might just show you how we use this thing 
if I can get to the share screen button. Okay, so we should be able to see the data that um, dashboard page. Okay, so the within herd ranking tool lives within the reports and tools menu item, and it's just the second one down. So we can just click on that. We're doing this without a safety net, of course. So you just never know what happens when you start playing with things on a web during a, a webinar, but we'll see how we go. So here's your starting point, the herd owner, herd ID, Shire Farm number box. So um, you can pretty much, I, I like the way the guys have set this up. You can pretty much type um, whatever you need to in that to find your herd. So we're gonna find the, Ellen Bank herd, which will be that one there. Not that they have a lot of crossbreds, but I'm just doing that for the for the sake of running the tool. Now you can set some birth date parameters if you want to. Okay, so just for the purposes of, of the demonstration, we will just say let's go with the cows that are born from. January 1st, 2018 onwards. If you want to, you can put in some calving date parameters. Um, you can select the cows that have been genotyped or you can just run it with a whole herd. So even though the focus is on making your, you know, this tool is about making your genomic information more useful, the you can use Parent, parent average breeding values in this and, and if, in case your cows or, or your heifers don't have, have genomics. So it will work the same way. The only issue with the parent average breeding values is sometimes the reliability, well, not sometimes, the reliability is generally lower. And so um, the, the strength of your decision is, is, not quite as, is not quite as strong because of the reliability of the breeding value. And some traits may not have breeding values because they're not reliable enough just for the parent average. Um, you can include cows sold or culled. So we're not really interested in about the ones that are gone. So um, let's get rid of them. And now you can go through and select which traits you want to put into your report. Now, we haven't got all traits available for the within herd ranking, but we've got quite a few, okay? So you can select either all. So if I go select all, it will select the key three key indices. So BPI, HWI, and SI. We come across to production. You can choose which production traits you want in your report. So we might just say, let's go with ASI. Within management, you've got milking speed, temperament, likability. You've got live weight and you've also got feed saved. So let's go with feed saved. But again, you can choose whatever you like. Amongst the health traits, we've got fertility. Um, we've also got survival, cell count, mastitis resistance. So you can pick whichever you like out of that. And then we've got some type traits as well. So we've got the two key overall type and, and memory system. Um, we've also got some traits in there that are that are pretty important in terms of um, creating the BPI and their relationship with survival. We've also got stature um, because we know people with uh, with mixed breed herds and crossbred herds stature is often a, a a thing that they like to like to try and even out. And so we've got pop stature in there as well. But you can pick whatever you like. Then it's simply a matter of just generating your report. And it usually, it does, well, sometimes takes, there you go. Oh, there we go. I've picked the wrong herd to, to do this with, haven't I? Um, so anyway, normally what would happen, so that's what happens when you do it without a safety net. Normally what would happen is, um, you would get a report at the end. If I did it for Janet Octolone, on the call today, I did it for Janet's herd earlier. 
and it and it run like a dream. There's obviously maybe not enough crossbred cows or cows of different breed within the um, within the Ellen Bank herd. But irrespective of that, I have one I prepared earlier, and here it is. So can we all see that Excel report on the screen? Yep. Yeah, that's good. Beautiful. Thanks, Pete. So this is what your report comes out looking like. Obviously, I've limited the number of columns in my report just so that it can fit the screen. Um, and it comes out in Excel, okay? You've got, um, across the top, you've got herd, the national ID, the cow name, if you've got names in there. Now, I've deleted these just for the purpose of the, uh, of the demo. The birth date. The breed, now the breed will be the breed of the sire, okay? And you've got whether she's milking, whether she's a heifer or whether she's a calf. So if you wanted to, you can use your filters to sort that out. Whether she's been genomically tested and then her breeding values. So I've selected BPI, HWI, SI, ASI, fertility, mastitis resistance, mammary system and feed saved. And so now we've got a spreadsheet with all of these and their corresponding reliabilities are in there as well. So now we've got a spreadsheet with all that data in it and we can now go to town using the likes of filters to start to slice and dice this data and make more sense of it. So let's just go with BPI, for example, and we're gonna sort the animals first up in BPI. And you can see we've got a herd here that's got predominantly or a mix of um, Holstein's reds and the odd jersey. And we've now ranked them in BPI within this herd. And you can see whilst the top 10 or so are Holstein's, we've got a red cow popping in there and a few more red cows down here and then a jersey and then a string of red cows down the bottom, all being compared on BPI all within the same herd. So I can, you know, we've got a red cow and a Holstein here with a with a within herd ranking of 119. Effectively, they are equally prof profitable from a genetic perspective. Um, again, you can you can just order the cows in whichever whichever rank you like. And when you rank them on fertility, not surprising, you get a few more red cows come up the list. And so you can use the filters to, um, to basically see which cows are performing best in your herd. Um, and you can probably set different filtering levels to create lists of cows within your herd to, um, uh, to identify the cows that you wanna work with and the cows that you don't. So you can see here what happens with a cow that's not genomically tested sometimes sometimes you miss out on a few breeding values because their reliability is too low. But this is a herd where there's a, there's a strong um, history of genomic, genomic testing. So it, it's, a, it's a herd that's got a lot of nice data. Interesting, you know, when you're running this particular herd for mastitis resistance, you get a lot of, a lot of red cows dominating the list, which is, which is good to see. And that's, again, underpins why people have different breeds within their, within their herds because they have different strengths. Yeah. And, and if you go to mastitis resistance, but you actually go to the bottom, it, it, it'll show. So that's the top. If, if you head down the list to the bottom, um, you'll actually see that it, it, it's not just a, a whole breed. You know, there are cows of different breeds that finish up at the bottom. Yep, definitely. I mean, there's Holsteins, there's red cows. Um, so, you know, there's, um, whilst there's some breed bias within traits, you could say, where some breeds have, uh, are a little better than others. What it, for me, what this tool really highlights is that, you know, there are equal cows within breeds for different traits. And you can't just make blanket assumptions that, well, because she's a Holstein, she's infertile, um, you know, and because she's a Jersey, she's poor for mastitis. So you just can't make those assumptions because it just doesn't work that way. Whilst there might be breed strengths and weaknesses, there's plenty of variation within breeds that allows 
you know, red cows to to perform the equal of, of Holstein cows as the example in this herd shows. What's the fertility one look like, Pete? The um because that, that'll be an interesting. Yep, so there you go. The top two cows in this herd are both Holsteins for fertility, and then a red, and then a Holstein, and then a red, and then a Holstein, and then a string of reds, and then the jersey. So yeah, it's uh it, it's difficult for any breed to sort of say they've got a monopoly, they might be a little better or a little worse, but there's plenty of breed variation that means animals can perform equally in those in those herd situations. So the within herd ranking will get updated every every public run. So every time we do a, um, a major breeding value run, so April, August, and, and December, um, as the ABVs of your cows change, so will their within herd ranking. Okay, so um, you'll be able to um, you'll be able to get updated breeding values um, at each public run. So I'm just I'm just saying I've got a question from Steph. No, not anymore because I've just answered that question. So that's good. Um, so yeah, I'll just maybe take that opportunity to to ask if anyone's got any questions. No questions. Right. Ah. So Steph just said, uh, a long time coming and looks very usable, which, uh, yeah, it is, um, it, it has been. I mean, this has been a bugbear for, for years and years and years. Um, and it's been a real barrier for people with mixed and crossbred herds to using uh, using genomics. And now I think we've um, uh, we've taken that away. Majid's just asked a question. Can a farmer who owns multiple farms um, uh, run the report for the multiple herds? And 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 I'm guessing, Majid, you're wanting them combined as as one group. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So the short answer to that is no, because of the nature of the um, because it's calculated within herd, um, it it won't be able to. If you've got two herds, um, you won't be able to compare across your two herds, unfortunately. Um, but you will be able to obviously make those decisions within herd, but not across herd. So any of the, the guys on the call that have got crossbred herds, is this something that uh, you think might appeal to you? Nobody? Everyone's gone shy, mm. and and it's it's when I say it's not just the crossbred herds either, Pete. Is it like it it can be the purebred herds? So, um, in the case of say a herd like Brian and Joe Dixon, where they've got purebred Holstein and they have got purebred Jersey, it'll work across. So they don't have to be crossbred, so long as there's two breeds. So it'll work across those two Correct. breeds. Yeah, and and this the example herd, um, the example herd here is. Is a herd that's probably got a bit of both. It's got um, uh, pure Holsteins, pure pure Reds, and some crosses in it. So it's a it's a bit of a mixed bag. This one. Can you hear me there? Yeah, I've got you, Rob. Yep. Um, yeah, I think farmers will like to see that and as a PI ranking um, instead of actually having just say you say you got a BPI of 230 um, you know really hard it's hard to know where that 
lies in your herd. But if you do it, as you say, uh, 190 to 100 is the average, um, people will be able to see where they lie in their herd a little bit better. Um, and I'm not sure whether you're going to have it, but uh, whether you can make those uh, figures into a graph so you can people can, farmers can see it uh, as a, a, a picture rather than a list of numbers uh, would be a nice feature to have. Yep, haven't thought about that one yet, but we can uh, we can explore that, Rob. And yeah, the, 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 quite, the other quite part... Quite easy to do in Excel. Mm. Yes. And the other part to that too, Rob, is that when we look at the, what the tool's going to do, um, you know, it, it's not something that's going to be used to select a cow for flushing or, you know, particularly, it, I, well, it could be, but, you know, generally the herds that will use it will be the mixed breeds herds or the crossbred herds. You're really just looking for an indication at that particularly at that early stage of the ones that you wish to cull or sell. So um, it'll be very accurate at identifying, you know, the animals within those groups toward the bottom of the list. Yeah. All righty. Now, Janet asked the question earlier, how long is this going to go for? And I said between 30 and 40 minutes. And by my clock, it's about five past one. So we're right in the middle of that because I'm guessing it's a busy time for farmers at the moment. So um, if we haven't got any more questions, I'm happy to wrap it up there just to get in to the report, but my herd is not recognised. All right. So, Janet, you and I, um, you and I might talk about that offline because I definitely run your herd this morning. So it worked for me. So if um, it's not working for you right now, we'll uh, we can work on getting that happening. So if anyone, if there's any more, if there's not any more questions, we might wrap it up there. And thank you for uh, thank you for jumping online. And um, hopefully you'll all go and spread the good word about the within herd ranking tool. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and thanks for thanks for jumping on board.